Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, and I hope you are all doing completely freaking amazing. And I'm scared. <laughs> um, today's video is the Cheap Arts Supply Challenge, as you saw by the title. Um, and I'm not looking forward to this, I swear. I've done this once before in the past, and it was a struggle, um, to say the least. It was still really, really fun, and I made a cool piece with it. Um, but it was a struggle, and I won't lie, I'm more scared for this type of paint and supply to use because it is. I am doing an acrylic only challenge right now. So I went out and bought super cheap acrylics and I have two different sets of acrylic paints that I will show you guys in a second. Um, and I'm challenging myself to make the art fully with only these paints. And you know, I'm excited. Um, I've never used cheap acrylics before or like super, super cheap acrylics before. So I'm wondering how they're gonna work and if they are going to work and like what the coverage is like. And I'm just excited. Um, and if you don't know what this challenge is, it's pretty self-explanatory by the name, but it is basically where you are challenged to go out, buy the freaking cheapest supplies you can find, like super cheap, like dirt cheap, as cheap as they come, <laughs> um, and you are challenging yourself to make a piece with that. Um, of course, I think everyone can make art, it doesn't matter how expensive your supplies are, you can make amazing things with super cheap supplies. I do think that sometimes the more expensive supplies make it easier to make said masterpieces, um, but you can do it with anything. Oh, and you guys, this, this challenge pisses me off. <laughs> like, I love it, and I think it's a great message, again, just because you can make amazing shit with, like, the cheap stuff, but I buy these cheap-ass supplies, and then I make something, and it usually looks pretty similar to what I would use and what I would create with expensive stuff, and that's annoying because, you know, the expensive stuff is more expensive and I could be doing the same stuff with cheaper supplies. Of course, you know, expensive acrylics are better just in general with longevity and non-yellowing and just like the overall quality of the paint and I would I don't want to give up golden. Golden's amazing. <laughs> um, but you know, I can probably make something similar. I'm thinking if it goes the same way as the last challenge and I'm excited. Um, so as for the sets of paint that I got to show you guys and to use, I got two sets um, at Michael's. Um, and the first set is the set of 16 craft paints. Um, I've never used craft acrylic paints before, so I'm excited to see how they work and what they do. Um, it was about $8, um, and I used the 40% off coupon because you gotta use that 40% off coupon when you go to Michael's. <laughs> um, and it turned out to be like $4.80, so about like 30 cents a tube, which is super cheap, like hella cheap. And, um, yeah, it's like, hopefully gonna be good paint? I don't know. Um, so yeah, this is the first. Um, box and if you see that the most of this is like soaked I freaking spilled all my freaking paint water <laughs> Like all over everything um, a few takes ago because this has taken me like maybe two takes to record and the first take was just Disastrous let me tell ya um, And then this is the second um, Set I got from Michaels again. I used the 40% off coupon because I'm cheap <laughs> and um, These were eight dollars as well, so they're like the same price, but Per tube, this one is a little bit more expensive. It is a more of a reputable brand. <laughs> it is more of a reputable brand. Um, Artist Loft is pretty good. It's probably the best brand when it comes to super super cheap acrylic sets, um, and it's also a good brand to get if you need like a starting set. I totally recommend if you are new to acrylics buying a set for like twenty dollars of just like all the starting colors. So you could get a Liquitex starting set, a Master's Touch starting set, even an Artist Loft starting set if you want to be have the cheapest. Um, supplies you can get. Um, and I've used these before. I've used that pink one before and I like these paints. They're pretty good. Um, and on the back they are labeled as being neon acrylic paints with a thick buttery texture which sounds lovely. Highly pigmented. Yes please. Great coverage. That's wrong. Uh, <laughs> that's not right. Um, if you if you put them over white they're pretty nice but um, usually it takes many layers to get them to be somewhat opaque. And they are permanent life fast pigments and non-yellowing, which I'm hoping is the case because if I make something really cool in this video, I want it to last. I don't want it to like fade and crumble away into nothing. So I'm hoping these are pretty good. Ew, that's annoying me. Yeah, there we go. Um, and yeah, I'll swatch out a couple of these and show you guys what is happening. And oh, also, I'm going to be using this canvas, which has an old sketch that I ended up not using on it. I'm just going to sketch something out off camera and probably erase this or gesso over it or something. Um, and yeah. Okay, so let's swatch out like one or two of them just really really quick before I get into painting um, Because I want to see what happens and how they work and I want to show you guys what they're like on camera really really quick Hold on. I'm watching off some cardboard 
so that I can use it as a swatch. Okay, so I have this nasty ass piece of cardboard, just ignore it. <laughs> and I'm going to try to swatch out some of these paints on it. Um, I'm gonna try to swatch out this purple one because I'm all about purple, you know that. Um, and yeah, I shook it pretty well before I started using it or before I'm squirting it out because I wanna make sure that everything in it is like combined or whatever. I don't know if these are going to be separated or not, but I shook it up pretty well. Um, and yeah, let's just see what happens. I hope these are pretty decent. Um, oh, okay. Eh. Okay. Well, these are like fluid paints. They're very, very watery. And um, like, you know, they're very um, fluid. <laughs> like, of course, because um, they're craft paints and they're pretty transparent. Ooh, that looks wrong. Um, but yeah, she's working. I like it. Um, they're very fluid, you know, and they're very easy to make move, I guess. Um, which is gonna be good for hair and like lashes and all that stuff. But yeah, work. I like it. I'm into it. Let's see how another color is. So far, so good. Plus for the white. Um, the white I was shaking up and it felt nastier <laughs> inside the bottle. Like it did not feel as smooth and nice as the yeah, purple one and it didn't sound like as fluid. Um, so I'm wondering how this one's gonna look. I'm just looking in there and I see nastiness. Like I see like crusty chunkiness, which no thank you. <laughs> and yeah, let's see what this one looks like. Hopefully it's like the same. Um, oh my God. Okay, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but it's like straight like cottage cheese. Like <laughs> it's so nasty, oh my God, okay. So the white, which I was hoping was gonna be like the best color because that's very important, it's like hella chunky, like super, super nasty and gelatinous, which no thank you. I'm not here for this at all. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the white. Gross. Okay, well, hopefully most of the paints are like this one and most of them are not like that abomination of a paint. <laughs> and yeah, I'm just gonna get into the speed paint. I'll put a voiceover over um, the speed paint and hopefully it's really cool to watch. And yeah, let's just get right into it. Okay guys, so welcome to the voiceover. <laughs> I'm at editing right now. I just finished editing that beginning part you just watched and I'm sorry, I don't realize how much I'm talking until I look at the time and then I'm talking for like freaking like 30 minutes, like I'm done. I rambled a lot, I had to cut a lot. <laughs> so I hope the like seven minute intro wasn't too unbearable to watch. I tried to make it kind of interesting, um, but I wanted to make sure I put out all the information out there before I got into the speed paint. Um, and I tried to make it as short as I possibly could. Um, hopefully in the future I can get better at making short and brief intros. I feel like I just keep talking and doing stuff and I don't know. Like, why can't I just sum up my points quick and move on? Like, I, 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 I'll never know. Um, <laughs> but welcome to the speed paint. I hope it's kind of interesting to watch. Um, this process was really, really fun. And that white paint scared me to death, but it was not that bad. So basically when I put it on the palette, it was like, Super chunky and nasty, and it stayed chunky and nasty. I shook it up for a long ass time, and it did not get any better. So, um, what I ended up doing is that I ended up just dealing with the chunkiness, <laughs> and I would, um, kind of like, I used a lot of water with my paint, and I didn't use a lot of just straight white in this piece, so not only did the water help thin out those chunks of whatever that is, <laughs> but like the other paints also helped, um, get the consistency to not be so disgusting. Um, you know, the paints weren't that bad. The neon acrylic paints were my favorite. Um, you know, they're already naturally thin, so they're great for glazing. And it was really fun to make the character's face using those acrylic paints. However, despite the fun of, like, painting it, like, her face turned out a lot more boring than I wanted. Like, usually when I'm painting, I want to try to work in a little bit of dimension at least, and do some dark spots and different colors and stuff, and I ended up doing what, like, my childhood self would do, where I just picked a color and went monochromatic with it, which, you know, I don't really like doing that often, um, but I was kind of forced to because, you know, um, I didn't really want to explore too much with the different colors just because, again, a lot of them were pretty bad and I was getting a lot of underbinding, which if you don't know what that is, that's basically where you put a layer of paint down and then you paint a layer of paint on top of it and then the layer from below comes up with that layer you put down and you end up getting like these craters and these horrible, horrible things. Like, let me tell you, there's nothing worse <laughs> than like 
getting through a cheek or a forehead and then doing like, oh, I'm just going to glaze a tiny, tiny, tiny bit and add a little bit of this color. And then you lift up a little bit of that cheek and then you're left with this horrible dent and it's just, it's really bad. Um, and I was getting that a lot with this painting, unfortunately. These paints underbind it a lot. And th part of that was also me being impatient and not waiting for it to fully dry and set or whatever. Um, but just in general, they did underbind a little bit. So I didn't really try to do too much, too many exciting things with this face, which was kind of depressing. Um, but I still was able to get some cool value, like, on her nose bridge and in her cheeks and stuff. But she ended up being pretty monochromatic with a lot of pinks. Um, that neon acrylic paint with the pink, that neon pink I love. <laughs> and I've used that in pieces before to get my neon colors. Um, I'd love to find an artist grade set of neon paints because I love these neon colors, you guys. Like, let me tell you, I could use them all day, every day. I could bathe in them. They are my favorite. And I really had a lot of fun doing the face despite it being kind of boring. Um, the hair was also being done with a lot of neon glazing. Again, those neon paints were a lifesaver because the 16 set of paints, they were so gray and dull that their colors, not only were they like all in the same value, so there was no like super light ones and no super dark ones, but they were all just ugly. Like all the colors were ugly. Like if I had to pick like a red or a purple, and none of the colors that were in that set were colors that I would have chosen myself to put in a painting just because again, they were dirty looking. They weren't, they weren't that pretty. Um, so I do not really recommend that set. Not only were half the paints chunky, <laughs> but like, you know, they were gray. Um, of course, you can still use them, and they will still do cool stuff. Like, of course, again, I really like how this piece turned out, despite some of the hassles I had with it. Um, but a lot of the cool stuff came from those neon paints. So I recommend Artisoft paints, just not really the weird 30 cent um, craft paints. Because, you know, as much as I promote making art with whatever you have and just making stuff and being creative, sometimes it's just too far. <laughs> and, like, if you're starting out and you buy the super cheap set of paints... It's just gonna discourage you because half the time they don't do what you want them to do and then you quit painting and it's just not a fun time. So, you know, I recommend using cheaper stuff, just not the cheapest of the cheap, if that makes sense. Because half the time they're gonna do weird stuff and it's not gonna be a good time. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I didn't have too many problems with them. Overall, I thought this piece turned out pretty well, and I had a lot of fun doing it, and it was kind of a quick process. I don't think I recorded for that long, um, but I recorded it over a series of days just because I was busy. Um, I dyed my hair again. I'm not green anymore. I dyed my hair blue, and it came out green, which was not good, <laughs> um, and I decided to just buy a super dark, dark purple and just cover up the green because I was kind of over the green. I have greenish eyes, so, you know, they were bringing out my green eyes, which is awesome, but I also wear a lot of green, like, hoodies and stuff, so I ended up walking around like a freaking green bean for a couple weeks, which was not good. Not a good look. Um, so I got some super dark purple dye to put on my hair, and it, I fixed that. But yeah, I don't know. I kind of rambled off for a second. But it was really fun. I love this painting. I hope you guys like it, and I hope you guys try out this challenge because it is a great thing to do, especially, again, if you don't have the best budget to buy the most expensive extravagant supplies because, again, you don't need the best stuff to make art. I just think that in the long term, if you want to sell your work or have it last a very, very long time and be um, archival, you should invest in some nicer paints, but, you know, just for practice and for fun, um, it was good. And, you know, maybe I'll sell this painting eventually if someone knows that it's, like, cheap art supply challenge stuff and it is discounted or whatever. But yeah, I recommend these supplies. I like them. Uh, the, the weird ones were weird, but the really nice uh, Artisoft ones I'll use again, just because they were so good. Um, I hope you're all doing completely amazing. And um, if you're curious, I put all of my links down below in the description box for you guys. Uh, my Instagram link is down there, as well as my dead Facebook link. Like, that I don't use anymore. <laughs> I think my last post was from, like, 2016 or something. So if you want to see some old art, it's all on that Facebook page. Um, and I think, um, in my next videos, I have that third geisha painting going up, and I want to do a few more different fun videos, like, I want to do a q and A. I I want to do an art journey type video, maybe a sketchbook tour, I have a lot of stuff I want to do, so hopefully expect some really fun videos in the next couple weeks. Um, and then also down there, I'm gonna put a few updates, and the music I am using, and just all that good stuff. I'll put the materials and links to the materials I used down below as well. Um, if you're curious about getting these paints to try them out. And I think that is about all I have to say about the painting. 
again, it was just a fun experience. I loved getting the paints and trying them out. I think that kind of stuff is so fun. And um, I hope you guys really, again, like this video and it inspires you to go out and make art with whatever the heck you have because you can use whatever the heck you freaking want to make anything. I think everyone should freaking make art and that everyone should just be creative people and practice and just enjoy making stuff because it's such a good thing to do. So even if you have like freaking like free art supplies, like use them because... I think just, it's just, I don't know. You can make really cool stuff with really cheap stuff. That's what I've come to conclusion with these challenges. And if you want to see another cheap parts by challenge, let me know in the comment section down below. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave them down below as well. I will get back to all of them if I can. And I think that's about all I have to say. I love you guys so freaking much. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel and watching this entire video. That means so much to me. And I love you guys and I will see you all in the next one. Bye. Bye.